Welcome to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast where Hot Springs Village, Arkansas is the star. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we discuss the history, facts, people, places, events, lots more surrounding Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com. Welcome back. Another episode of Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Easy to find. HSVinsideout.com. Coming to you from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, until I can get to the village. Randy Cantrell. And he is Dennis one, Simpson. the only Dennis Simpson. Inside the village. And apparently, I got the memo. It's the Blue Oxford Shirt Day. And I think we look rather sharp today, Randy. I we think do. we do. We do. We're like ZZ Top. We're two sharp dressed men. <laughs> Well, that's the only two of them. There's only yeah, two sharp dressed yeah, men left. And unfortunately, that's no, true. That's rest true. in peace, Dusty. Yeah, rest yeah. in peace. Yeah, yeah. Okay, today we're going to uh, we're going to provide some greater depth and clarity to the whole short term rental conversation. As Dennis and I surveyed the last episode, which was perfectly great, and we're very proud of it. But we realized there's a lot of you that probably were left with some questions. And so we hope to address those questions today. And so I'm going to play the role. Well, the role that comes natural, the, the resident curious Rube who doesn't know these things. S T R is short for short term rental. Yeah, there you go. There you and go. And let's okay. define that. Let's define yeah, that term exactly. just a little short term rental typically is a month or less in case just to give the very basic fundamental there. A lot of people are like, well, what does that mean? You know, is it one night? Is it, well, it can be anything between that and a week. And I'm sorry, in a month, typically. So typically things that are over 30 days are considered long-term or longer term rentals. Well, and many times things over 30 days don't include furnishings. Yeah. You know, if it's point. over 30 days, you may want to put your own rental in there. And that's not to say people don't rent 30 days at a time for four or five months at a time. And in particular in this market, Randy, where people are waiting on their homes to be built or something like that. Yeah. That's kind of common. Right. Okay. Then there are, you know, people are, people are familiar or may be familiar with, you know, the, the bread and breakfast things, you know, I've stayed, Ron and I've stayed in some bread and, hello, bed and breakfast places. Hello, tongue. It's meat. your turn to mess yeah. up. It's hello. your full turn. Yes. Hello, tongue, meat, brain. Um, you know, and these are, these are typically they've got their own website. They rent directly to their customers and whatnot. And even in this day and age of Airbnb and VRBO, I don't know, d describe for us the differences. So there's a particular bed and breakfast in, um, Nacogdoches that Rhonda and I like to go to perfectly great host. She's wonderful. She has her own website. Everything is directly through her. She doesn't do Airbnb because she has her own website and she's been in business forever mm -hmm. in a day versus Airbnb and VRBO. I don't know. Just talk let's, to us about it. Let's go a little history. And I tell you what, there's a couple of great books on audible.com. If you really want a deeper dive in this, the bottom line is, is that two guys, if I'm not mistaken, I think they were in San Francisco. Yeah, it was San Francisco. And there was a convention in town and it was so astronomically expensive to get a hotel room that one guy said, well, you know, I've got some air mattresses at my house. I can, I can do you an Airbnb, you know, and that's where the name literally came from is like an air mattress B and B. And, and the, the, the real distinction is typically Randy, you get breakfast. We don't serve breakfast. Well, we'll give you some snacks and some popcorn and some coffee and whatever, but a real B and B typically does contain a really great breakfast in the morning. Um, Airbnb has that's that's where the, uh, the 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 chain breaks. There's no such association. Some people do offer uh, a breakfast in the mornings, uh, but you know, one of the reasons I wanted to do this show, and I'm, I, I, we talked about how this really is is kind of a ground basis of what it is. You know, I, I saw I saw a um, a review with a lady who was in Puerto Rico. And she was looking for Airbnbs in Puerto Rico. And she said she found out very quickly it was important to have two things in Puerto Rico. Number one, this unit has a generator. Okay. Okay. And number two, this unit has air conditioning. Now, <clears throat> yeah, you see, yeah, Randy, who's in Dallas today, and I'm in Little Rock and or Hot Springs, and it's hot today. Yeah. It's a steamy day. 
And they were saying that the power supply in, in Puerto Rico is rotten. Doesn't they don't get power 24 yeah, hours a day. Power they, grid. Exactly. They rarely get power seven days a week, 24 hours a day ever. So you need a battery back, a, you know, a generator backup. And yeah. then number two, it's not necessarily given that everybody has air conditioning. And I bring that story up because you have to realize from Airbnb that covers people literally across the planet from everything from renting a yurt or a tent to mm -hmm. renting a mansion. There's a lot of variables involved in that. And, and so most times, most, I'd say 98% of Airbnbs do not include a breakfast, but it's snacks and yeah, yeah. breakfast and such. The vetting of guests and that's, that's another reason that I, I think it's important to the conversation because as an Airbnb and as a VRBO <laughs> customer, I have an account. And if you are unfamiliar with these, you set up an account, you set up your credit card information, your ID information. I mean, it's, I don't know if rigorous is the right word, but it's reasonably thorough. Wouldn't you say? Uh I like the word thorough and, and I rem am reminded because I mean, Diane and I love to travel too. You know, we're driving down the road. We, we don't know where we're going to be spending the night because we don't know where we're going to get to, you know, yep. we, we will get up leisurely at nine in the morning and knock around and we're out by 10 and they're coming to clean the rooms and we're happy and we're on the road and boogieing along with my favorite person on the planet. Yep. And we're having a great time and it's nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. And we think, Hey, you know, we probably need to find a place. Well, we'll go to booking.com or whatever, and, and we'll book a property. Uh, and then when we get there, what's the first thing they ask you when you walk in? Can I see a photo ID? Mm -hmm. Well, Airbnb does the same thing. In now, advance. In advance, exactly. And uh, uh, when we have, and, and let me back up, a lot of guests, I don't see it so much in the village. And we are, I think, I guess I, I learned this the hard way. We're kind of rare this way. Uh, we will rent to first-time bookers. And you say, well, what's the big deal? And, and this is where people really don't understand. When I leave my hotel tomorrow morning, they're not going to rate me and say, boy, Dennis left peanut shells all over the bed and he was a mess or whatever. And I'm not going to rate, I may rate them on booking where they say, oh, well, I wish the carpet was a little cleaner, blah, 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 blah. But in Airbnb and VRBO, we rate them and they rate us. And it's a talk about a dance, you know. Um, you know, more than once I've sent a message to a guest and said, boy, you kind of left a real mess. I'm going to leave your review and it'll be a three or a four on the cleanliness. But, you know, next time I know you want to be a five-star guest. I know you do. You know, why don't we work toward that? And 99% of the time I get a reply that says, I'm sorry, my sister got sick and we had to run or it just wasn't, you know, there's typically a good reason why people leave a mess per se. But that said, and, and let me go through this real quick, if I can, Randy, they're rated on, I'm rated on accuracy, the check-in process, my location, cleanliness, and just basic overall how the event was. Well, I rate them on their cleanliness. I rate them on their communication and they rate me too. And then I rate them on, um, oh goodness, what's the last one? Uh, if I will rent to them again. So if, if for, let me, let me paint this picture now. So an accuracy just, is the depiction, your depiction of your property. Exactly. Are you exactly. representing this thing accurately or not? Got it. As I sit here looking over beautiful Lake DeSoto, just into the West this way, there's a lady who I um, will not name names and I will not even name her listing. She has a property across DeSoto, not across the street from the lake, across the main road from the lake up in a little subdivision called Valina. It's a pretty area. It's a little townhouse area. It's very nice. Her big picture on the front is a shot down the lake. Yeah. And if you don't read, as 90% of people don't anymore, you will think, man, we got a spot on the lake. Yeah. No, no. You got to rock about two blocks to get to that spot on the lake. Yeah, but in and, that case, the host is just hurting themselves. And they really do. They really do. I, it's disappointing because, I mean, I think her prices are very reasonable. And yeah. if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a realtor that does this. Uh, but the unit's very nice. The, she, she has nothing to hide, but that photo yeah. right. is deceptive, I would think is the word, or, or misleading. Yeah. Misleading, yeah. And maybe and, not intentionally, but it still yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. And, and well, once again, underneath it, it says, you know, two blocks away, like DeSoto. Right. 
but right. nobody reads that and yeah, they show right. up and go, well, there's no lake from our view or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, caveat emptor, you got to kind of buy or beware. But at the same time, I think the point I'm trying to make here is that these people don't come in without any knowledge, no registration, no ID. I, Airbnb knows who they are. I know who they are. We have a photo ID and Airbnb provides a $1 million policy of insurance every night they're with us. I have people that will call and say, hey, Dennis, we stayed with you Monday through Wednesday and we, we're staying in the same area. Can we rent your boat on Friday? I'm sorry. No, I can't do that. Right. The insurance policy quits the day you walk out of the building. Uh, yeah. You're not covered under my insurance anymore. Well, and back up because you were talking about guests being rated as well. And that's important because now as a host, if you see that my wife and I have got multiple two-star ratings, mm -hmm. now what? Well, it's funny you should say that, you know, and Randy, I know, I know this about you and about me too. We have only five-star ratings, by the way, but I'll, I'll go into that because I leave places better than I found it, but that's, that's just me being anal, right? I mean, you, I've got the vacuum out. I'm doing this. <laughs> I do. I seriously, if there's a vacuum that I can get my hands on in a, in a unit, I'm using it. 98% of the people that come to the village, we talked about this the other day. If you want to party, the village is not where you want to come. Okay. If you want to come and trash a place, the, you're under such a microscope here. Your neighbors know who you are. The people, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just not that kind of a place. It's not that kind of a place. And the vast majority believe our property is really super clean. That's not a problem. But the rating system, if I see somebody that has a two or has a four, I had a lady the other day that her average was a 3.2 and she had stayed in other properties. And I, I, before I booked, you know, when here's how it is, they will send a request to book. I will look at their profile. They're from Louisiana. They're from Shreveport. They're from whatever. They've got a 2.7 rating. And I will say, you know, I'd really like to book with you or to, rate, to, to host you. Can you explain to me what these other two stars were about? And I can go back and look and I can see that the first event was a one star. The second event was a two star. The last two events were five stars. Okay. I'm beginning to get some, okay. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, one lady said, well, you know, the one star, I actually let somebody else book in my name, which is an absolute no, no for Airbnb, yeah. but I let somebody else book in my name. And when they left, they left it real, real messy. Okay. Well, lesson learned, right? You don't mm -hmm. do that anymore. Uh, and in case anybody asks, and I kind of trumpled over that one, um, I have parents all the time. Well, Hey, I'm going to rent this for my kids. And I'm like, I want to be very clear. Airbnb does not allow that. If you do that, you are responsible in every way for these kids. Okay. And, and for what it's worth, we need to address VRBO in just a minute. And VRBO is the same way they, they measure people and whatever. And whereas Airbnb is not as old as VRBO at all. VRBO precludes it, maybe uh, precedes it, maybe 10 to 15 years. Right. VRBO was, we have buyers, we have sellers, we have renters and, and a guest, and we're going to line them up and we're going to stand back out of the way. Whatever y'all do with each other, you do with each other. Well, Airbnb putting the insurance policy in place and giving the rating system, and now VRBO does the rating system. The answer to the question is, who vets these people? Everybody else that's ever rented to these, patients, these guests have vetted them for me. And some of them are a lot harder off, harder than I am. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Well, and in addition, I know as a consumer um, that each of those platforms I mean, there's a degree of vetting as well because of the hoops that I, you've got to jump through in order to create an account. And let's talk about a problem that comes up. I mean, explain from a host perspective. So I come to your, I come there to where you're at your, your basement guest suite there on Lake DeSoto in hot Springs village, Arkansas. <clears throat> and I'm a, and I'm a problem or I, or I cause some damage. And I booked through Airbnb. And so now what role do they play, if any at all? So let me give you a couple of exact examples. Number one, when you book this property, Randy, and based on the property you rent, if you book this one, there's a $150 security deposit that's tagged on your credit card. Okay. It may not be implemented. It may not be pulled, but it's tagged in case they need to. Um, <clears throat> and, and, for people who are considering being doing Airbnb, I, I'll give you some advice real quick. If the property is in your home, 
it's so much easier and it's so much better than if it's a remote property. The further away the property is, I have less communication with the people. They Maybe they don't see me. If you look at me eye to eye and you come down the stairs and we talk when you walk in, you don't go, hey, I can't wait to go inside and trash Dennis's place. Right. You're going to be a little more. That's just the nature of the beast. Yeah, human nature. We had a couple of, we had three girls that we met. I met as they were coming into our townhouse over across from the Waypoint Marina. Very sweet ladies, very nice college age kids. And one of those three girls actually booked the name, the unit, and it's in her credit card. It's in her name, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I came back in. I happened to be the one. I cleaned it before they left, and I cleaned it when they walked in the door, which we now have different staff. And I do still do that, but you know, you got to supervise it. Came back in the door, walked out into the Arkansas room, and there's three holes in the carpet. And there are little burn marks in the carpet. So I text the guest and I said, Hey, I send pictures. And I'm like, Hey, is this a problem? Did y'all know? Oh, I went down and my friend said that was already there. And I text back and I said, no, it wasn't because I was the guy that cleaned it right before you showed up. And I said hi to you when you walked in the door, I know what you look like. You know what I look like. That's not how that was. And this is going to be about 250 bucks to you know replace this carpet or this rug as it were. And it was quiet a little while and quiet, just a couple of hours. And then I got a message back and it said, could we pay you that on Thursday? Mm -hmm. and, and once again, it doesn't matter in our digital age, Randy, and you know, and I know this better than anybody in our digital age, we think we can text or we can whatever talk to them, talk to them, speak to them in yeah. their face and, and, Decent people do decent things. That's right. uh, we are approaching, uh, we've had over 1,200, but we are right now, you and I talked a minute ago, we've had 1,172 five-star reviews in the last, uh, coming on four years. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of guests. I've had that unit for, the, for that, that rug. Uh, we had a gentleman, poor guy from Memphis. I felt sorry for him. We actually had a pot of those scented wax he turned around and whacked it and the wax went oh. all over everything. It destroyed one of the oh, yeah. rugs. It, it messed up some other things. I sent him a message. I'm like, man, I'm so sorry, but you know, we're going to read it. No question. Can I pay you with PayPal? Boom. Paid it right away. Uh, out of, out of probably 1200. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And yeah. now, now I'll, I'll, I'll brag on me a minute. I ride rough shot over these things. You, you yeah, don't, yeah. if you don't communicate with me, uh, and I'll send you a message the night you check in at 8 PM. And if I say, Hey, everything's going, how's it working? Well, you don't reply. And I don't hear from you till you check out the next day. You're not getting five stars of communication. And typically when I don't get that communication back, we've got sheets on the floor. We've got messed up things. We've got dirtier than usual, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you just kind of, kind of watch things for those critics that may, well, let's just address the elephant in the room. We don't need to have short-term rentals inside, no. the, we, inside the village, you yeah. know, and, and if we do, if we do, these people need to pay, they need to pay for the privilege of making money off of their properties. Let's just go ahead and address it. Well, as a guy who has, uh, and I, I, we were had this conversation, Randy, and I, I, I yep. have enough humility to say. When Diana and I got married, uh, when we were together eight years ago, and then when we got married about six years ago. We didn't have that many nickels to rub together. Uh, we, you look now, you say, we got four Airbnbs and you, you're doing a podcast and you're whatever. Mm, it was a lot tighter then. And it, it was not, there was nothing certain. Nothing was given at that time. Uh, and Airbnbs, we actually, and I think I've shared this story before, but it's, it's worth sharing in this home that I'm sitting in right now, we rented out one room. Diane was downstairs on her little treadmill, a room we never used. Staring out at the lake, which is what, Randy, 15, 17 steps to the lake. Yeah. I mean, Close. you're on the lake. Yep. You're on the lake. And she said, you know, somebody might pay to stay down here. And I was thinking 50 bucks, 60 bucks a night. Well, yeah, maybe. Okay. And I realized I kind of had a flashback because I love the history of the village. You know, Cooper did this 20 times a night, 50 times a night, 200 times a night. Cooper had rentals all over the place. And I can mention the names village villas was one of their associates. They had hundreds of rentals all over the place. And then it kind of really hit me. And I think we've talked about this before. Virtually everybody who's lived or bought in the village 
has at least rented one night short-term rental just to see what sundown looks like in the village. Mm-hmm. Are there sirens all or not long or is it too loud? Do the neighbors right. scream and holler? Everybody needs a test drive, right? Yep. And I realized that was part of the scenario. And then when, when we started renting out our downstairs and people would come in and say, it's so incredibly quiet. And we saw stars we've never seen in the city and there was never a siren and it was just so peaceful and tranquil and so beautiful. And I'm speaking to you, Randy Cantrell, I really slept well that night Mm -hmm. and it was a peaceful night's rest. We really realized we had something there and probably within six to eight months, we were actually paying our mortgage with that, that one downstairs room. And within a year, we were doubling our mortgage, which allowed us to buy another property and another property and another property. And all that said, I guess it's not a presumption to say it all. Airbnb is allowing Diane and I to have what you would consider a retirement because we eight years ago didn't have that. Yep, that's right. Well, and come on, the days of the days of pensions and those of you that have them, <clears throat> count your stars, you know, you're lucky because that is gone. It must know, be it's, nice. It's gone. Must have been nice. Well, yeah. And we've, for me as a consumer, I don't have a dog in the hunt, except that if it weren't for short-term rentals, specifically that room that you converted, which was our very first experience inside hot springs village, I would have never made the trip. I would have never made the journey. I would not have booked a hotel outside the village in order to come in and visit the village. Number one, that's problematic. As far as the whole guest thing goes, how would you get in? So that's a hurdle and a half that a lot of people don't even stop and think about. How are you going to get, not to mention the economic impact. We come a week at a time and typically, you know, since we came over, we are going to spend five, four to six weeks, one week at a time inside the village. So we're supporting people like you, a host, Mm -hmm. but we're there a week. What do you think we're going to be doing during that week? You know, I I mean, whether it's, if you eat at a restaurant once a day, and many people do more, if you play golf at all, I mean, we had a conversation. I won't name, I won't name the fellow, but he's got some properties there. And he, he mentioned renting a house to a bunch of guys who came for a golf trip and it resulted in, he said about, cause he tracked it about 3000 bucks in greens fees. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, a lot of people d- just want to get their bag of rocks and start throwing. And let's keep in mind, we said it in the first show, 284. Yeah. Is that what yeah. we're up to 284? Now this is VRBO and Airbnb combined. According to Air DNA, yep. which is a nationally recognized authentic uh, authentic service here, so about two hundred and eighty four uh, rentals combined of Airbnb and VRBO. Now you say, well, that's a that's a lot. Well, not when you got eight thousand houses, it's not that much, you know. No. Uh, and and historically, I was trying to find some information here. It was really hard to find. Historically, I don't think that's higher or lower than any other number. I, I think. Once again, I think sometimes, unfortunately, in the village, I think we, we find boogeymen. And, you know, it used to be, like I said, 20 years ago, the boogeymen were the, were the construction workers because those darn guys came in and they did all the, the crime and they messed up everything. And no, 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 that was just a misconception. And I think a lot of times I think Airbnbs are the same way or short-term rentals. Uh, it, it's the perception that those people are messing stuff up. Uh, one, two... Three houses down, three houses down. I'll say his name. He's a great guy. Cor Linguinas, a phenomenal guy. Love him. Uh, A Swede, and I think he's probably in his late 70s, early 80s now. Guy's out there with a weed eater on Sunday mornings cleaning things up. Fantastic host. That house, three doors down from us, sleeps 14 people. He gets $5,000 a week. He rents it 65% of the time, and those people go out on the lake. They rent his party barge. They go to the waypoint. They rent uh, kayaks, canoes. They go to the waypoint and they eat food. They go to restaurants all over the place. They play golf all over the place. That one house alone can be $20,000 a month of just that income, much less. Randy, what would you say? A a week 
are they that five thousand dollars? You think if they leave without spending seven thousand, that would be a surprise? No, I mean, no, yeah, uh, that that would. So, and then there's that impact. I think, I think it's easy to point the finger at the Airbnb or the VRBO and say, well, those evil, nasty, terrible people that once in a while they make noise nearby. Well, I got news for you. Two doors over, we have a military guy with a military family. And he's got three kids. Uh, 10, 12, and 15, and they have a great time on the weekend. They're squealing and running. They're not renting. They live here. Yeah. They live here. Okay. Sh- sh- do they get a bad rap? No, they're being kids. So what? Let them be kids. Listen, I, we rented the last time that we came, we rented a place that was perfectly lovely and enjoyed it. And I'm going out and it's, it's late in the afternoon and I hear, I hear an electric guitar. Truly. And, and it's on, we're on a golf course. Can't quite tell where it's coming from. Go take a walk, you know, see if I can spot, you know, and I don't mind cause I'm a music guy, but it's a, it's a kid practicing rock and roll, probably in his garage. And I'd bet you a dollar to a donut, a resident. Yeah. Don't know that, yeah. but yeah. just saying, you know, I, I think part of Part of the, one of the things that we need to, here's the other elephant in the room. And that is, is that I, I started coming here 22 years ago and everything on the radio was Lawrence Welk, uh, big band count Basie. And then mm-hmm. that's not bad. I like some yeah. of that. I don't yeah. like it 24 seven, but I like some uh, of that. Right. But that said, there was a perception of who the villagers were. You right. know, I, I was talking to Greg Jones. We were at the 4th of July, uh, uh, bash and uh, a lady came up to Greg. I love this story. Lady came up to Greg and she said, Oh, these, there's a lot of people here for their outside the village. And Greg said, well, what, what makes you say that? And she said, there's a woman over there in a bikini smoking cigarettes with tattoos and she can't be from the village. And Greg, Greg just died laughing. I know he came back to tell me and Diane just to forget it. And I was like, which bikini are we talking about? You know, which tattoo are we talking about? You know, the, the village, it would be easy to think that the village is monolithic and nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing, nothing for, for a place that has roughly 16,000 people. We send 900 kids out to schools, the fountain Lake and Jesseville every day. Yeah. You don't have 900 kids and not have a granny in a bikini somewhere. I say granny, a a mom in a bikini with smoke cigarettes, you know? Well, and, and to kind of round out the point about earning revenue from your property, there's also taxes. There's also taxes that get paid. So address that. Uh, you know, I wish you would bring that up, Randy, because you know, everybody says, well, you know, these, these Airbnb, these Airbnbs or the VR, they should pay taxes. We do completely. And, the, and I'm glad you brought that up. The bottom line is, is that Airbnb mandatorily holds out Saline County, Garland County, any other city to end state taxes. And for example, for hot springs here in Garland County, where our properties are located, they hold out the hamburger tax for hot springs. We shouldn't have to pay that. We're not in hot springs. Airbnb holds it out just to be safe. It's another 1%. So, you know, it adds up, but you get my drift. That said, all those taxes are held out and we don't even have the option of, oh, hey, we want to pay those or we don't. They're taken out before we even get a check. Ah, and the most important thing I think you need to mention VRBO has just recently started doing that where they, they do hold out the taxes. They actually had a program before where they would let you opt in or opt out if you wanted to hold out taxes. But the huge point that you have to see here is that, you know, Dennis, we booked with you in May and we're coming in August and we've got two weeks and it's going to be, you know, 1800 bucks for, to them. It'll be $2,300 or you know, $2,300 to Airbnb. It'll be 1800 to me. And they're like, wow, you know, well, you know, can we pay that in two payments? You know, you've already got that money. No, I do not. Airbnb does not give us one dime until the day after you arrive. What? The day after? Let let, let me fill you in on how this works. I actually, in some of our properties, we actually allow one day rental. You check in at 4 p.m. You check out at 11 a.m. We don't get your money till 5 p.m. the next day. What if you trash the place? I don't even know, but you, you're already, you've gone for six hours before I even get your payment. 
So it's not as it might appear, you know, it's not like Airbnb holds those funds. We don't hold those funds. All right. I've got to also mention before we kind of begin to wrap this thing up, the work involved, especially to be a super host and, and help us understand wh what is a super host. We go on Airbnb. I don't know. Does VRBO have have a similar kind of a term. I don't know that they do. I don't, I use Airbnb way more than I use VRBO. Yeah. They have a preferred host. Okay. Uh, but, so but basically the super, yeah. the super host in the Airbnb and let's just talk about the, the work. So you build it and they come and it's all just roses and it's all just smooth and there's just no effort at all. And you scoundrels are, are making money and y'all are bringing all kinds of problems into the village and you know, it's a bunch of meth heads and a bunch of late night partying and drunken bashes and blah, 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 blah. Cause you know, drunken people can't wait to come to the village. It, it, that's the, well, you know, if I'm a day. meth head, I'm absolutely going to be registered at Airbnb, <laughs> you know, you know, it's ninny. So, so ninny, they can track ninny. your behavior and, and yeah, rate you. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 No, a super host. And, and I'll have to tell you, that was one of the most important things to us. Uh, you have to have a 4.9 rating or above. And you have to maintain that. They review you every quarter. So January through March, they'll review and they say, okay, Dennis, did you have an average of 4.9 stars or above? Let me fill you in. <laughs> that means that 90% or more of your reviews have to be five star or above. You have to be exceptional. We have been four star, we have been five star uh, Airbnb super host. They measure by the quarter. So we're coming on our uh, 13th quarter in a row every day. What does that take? Well, the units have to be clean every time. I have to allow people in the gates every time. I have to have good communication every time. I have to make sure they have a good experience every time. And stuff happens. Propane bottles go dry. Somebody before you used all the propane. Uh, you know, somebody let the water out of the hot tub or somebody turned the hot tub off and it didn't stay warm. And that's reality. That's just reality. No. So I have two options. As I see it, Randy, I can take out the hot tubs. I can take out the kayaks. I can take out all these uh, attractive nuisances that, that would make my scores go down if they don't function right. But now I've just got any other place on a piece of water and you don't have a kayak. You don't have a, a, a we have hammocks. Uh, you don't have a hot tub. You don't have a hot tub, sip a glass of wine and stare out over the sunset. It changes the mood a lot. So we set the bar high for ourselves, but then our guests said the same thing. And once again, I'll say this till I pass out, communication with the guest. I'm sorry, we'll get a bottle of propane over there as soon as possible. That's okay. We've, we're already cooking it in the oven. Don't worry about it. Just wanted you to know, let you know for the next guest. I mean, seriously, overall, and I don't know if it's just, I've seen, in my opinion, I've seen stinky people come mm -hmm. to the village and be nice because everybody else is nice. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. And I think well, if it was a, go if ahead. it was a Brooklyn, if it was a Brooklyn type environment and people were screaming at each other and giving hand gestures or whatever, that they would, they would be people that would join right in. But when nice is expected and nice is kind of the standard, they're nice back. Is it fair to say that if you're going to, it, well, let's qualify it. If you're going to be a successful short-term rental operator, it's a high touch business. It is a very high touch business. It is. And, uh, I don't prefer, I, you know, we have automated messages that say, Hey, great for checking in. Thank you're here. Mm -hmm. You know, here, here's some things to go do and places you'd like and whatever. Um, like I say, if it was my full-time job and that's all I did, I wouldn't mind doing that all the time, but we have some automated messages that don't give as much touch as I prefer. But when somebody calls back with a question or emails back with a question and says, Hey, you know, really what about Bubba's brews versus, you know, Capos tacos or something, man, I'm the first guy to go, you know, sure. Let's do that. And as I said, in our short-term rental show, you know, people say, well, what does Dennis do? Well, Diane says most times between six and 10, he's answering people's text messages about, well, the sheets are over here and, and this is where that is. And how right. can we help you? And I hope you had a good time. You right. Know? All right. What haven't we, what haven't we discussed that we should. Well, Anything? you know, we've covered the the payment options. We've covered the the rating, the vetting. Um, ah, I know what it is. There are people who are listening right now and people who are watching that may or may not have ever 
uh, been on an Airbnb, do a trial run. You don't have to book it. You don't have to put the book it button. But I mean, if I can, if you don't mind a self-serving plug here, go to ddvillageprop.com. DD, David, David, villageprop.com. You know, it's for Dennis and Diana. And you'll see all four of our rentals. You'll see our to-do list. You'll see our where we like to go eat. You'll see our favorite things. I mean, this is this is the Alligator Park. This is the uh, Garvin Gardens. This is all the things that people want to do. Uh, Randy, one of my favorite stories about business is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, do you know how many quarter inch electric drills or three quarter inch electric drills were sold last year? No. As a rule, it's in the 750 to 780,000 range. So about three quarters of a million electric drills. You know how many people wanted electric drills? Zero. Zero. They wanted holes. And if there was a way they could make holes without getting a drill, they would do that, but they have to have a drill. Right. Well, if there was a way you could have a fantastic time on the lake without doing an Airbnb or a VRBO, I strongly encourage it, but you won't be able to do that because you'd have to buy a whole house or whatever. That's right. Or, or, or camp out, I guess. I don't know. But try it. Just come and go through the process and realize that when you start vetting, somebody's going to have to say, somebody like Dennis is going to say, okay, Randy, I'll let you be, I'll let you, you be my first rental. I'm going to trust you and you're going to come in and I'm going to say, okay, these are the rules. And then you understand how you get through the gate and you're my responsibility when you come through the gate. So frankly, I want you to behave. Let's be frank about it. I mean, that's the implied and objective. And, and when you get here, have a great time. And I, you know me, Randy, I've done this with tears in my eyes before. Diane and I have other ways to make income. We have other ways to make a life, a living. The bottom line is, is we love, love seeing families make great memories. I, I see people out on the, the lake towing the kids around and connecting with their kids in ways they haven't in years. I had a lady, one of the last times we were recording, Randy, had a lady that her eight-year-old and her 21-year-old were bonding because they were actually defending some time together. And my comment to her was, and not to be snarky, I said, nobody comes off the lake after they've been tubing all day and says, man, I really miss that Xbox. I wish I'd been on my Xbox all day. Yeah. No, it doesn't happen. Well, as, as a person who's outside, who's coveting one day being an insider, um, it has given Rhonda and I the opportunity to just taste all the different places in the village that frankly even, even residents could do. It's interesting. I don't remember who the host was and I wouldn't name them even if I did, but there's, uh, I remember a couple and I remember them telling us about renting inside the village. They have a home in the village and they have an Airbnb and there are some other places that occasionally on a weekend that they will rent inside the village because they live in on a certain place. And to even get a flavor, well, as an outsider, I mean, that's just pretty stinking priceless, you know, and you couldn't do that with a hotel. It's a completely different experience. Yeah. Uh, I've mentioned it before, but it bears repeating. We walk the neighborhoods. We walk the neighborhoods. We've got one place that we go that is incredibly secluded and there's not a house within spitting distance of this place. And so you can walk and see nothing but critters. Uh, but everybody else, you know, is typically going to, there's going to be neighbors somewhere. And the number of people that engage us in these walks, I can't, I can't count the number of immediate neighbors who engage. I see you guys are from Texas. Where about you guys from? Because we learned very quickly, there's a boatload of Texans over there. Uh, and for good reason, you know, it's five hours from my door to your door. And one hour of that is me getting through Dallas because I'm over here in Tarrant <laughs> County, closer to Fort Worth. So you know, but if, you, if, if you were in Rockwell, you could be here in four hours. Is what yeah, I'm that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I don't know. I just think the economic impact of, of, of the rental, the experience, the, it, it'd be interesting. It would be interesting to know how many people have bought property in there just this calendar year. And as we hit the record button, we're approaching September mm -hmm. and their, their first, exp I, I can guarantee you the vast majority of them, if not all of them, their first experience was a short-term rental. 
in the village. And so the dollars that are coming in, I don't know, it'd be, it would be interesting if somebody is even attempting to quantify mm-hmm. the economic impact that rental has, as opposed to admittedly the handful of people on social media who want to, but listening, these are the people that want to lay every, every ailment at the feet of whatever the latest target happens to be. And it's, I get it's it. the POA. They're the problem. And no, 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 no it's the re- short-term rental. They're the problem. No, no, no. It's the, it's the changes we're having. Cause you know, you can't ever have change. Well, I got news for you. It happens every day, just a little, you know, whether you like well, it or not. I do professional coaching with leaders, typically high end leaders. And I can just tell you, you can write one of two stories. You can write a victim story. You can write a hero story. And Dennis and I are choosing to write a hero story. We've had enough rocks. We're not, we're just, we're just choosing to be, we're choosing to be heroes. We're not choosing to be victims and everybody can roll the way they want. Okay. Did we, did we leave any stone unturned? Our, 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 I don't think we did. I think we covered them all, Randy. And I, some great questions. I appreciate you asking those and having a chance to really kind of flesh it out because I, I realized in our last, last short-term rental discussion, we assumed people knew what a short-term rental was. We assumed you knew how they did it and we assumed everybody did it and we would be wrong. Yep. So I'm glad we had this kind of a clarifier message, this clarifier session to kind of just kind of straighten that out. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you, the audience, you got value in this. We appreciate you listening. Um, I don't know. What's the call to action today, Dennis? The call to action is if you don't even want to book something, at least go to airbnb.com, vrbo.com, look and see what the properties are, look and see what their availability is. Just check and see instead of chunking rocks and look and say, well, I wonder what that would be like. I I love the story you had, Randy, where your host, your Airbnb host went to other Airbnbs because they wanted to just experiment what it's like. I mean, and I, and let's go through the profiles. Uh, I I have never lived on a view lot in the village. I own view lots that have magnificent views. Uh, I think I may have told you. And when you say a view lot for our audience, what do you mean? Well, I'll give you the exact example. Uh, Roughly nine years ago, I showed Diane this lake house and I said, what do you think? And she was like, Oh, that's nice. That's okay. You know, we've lived here and you know, just about a half mile up on top of the ridge there, Valina, we have a 30 mile view that goes over into the national forest. And you can actually see the wilderness area. The stars are unbelievable at night. It looks like you're in Gatlinburg or Breckenridge or someplace. It's phenomenal. I took Diane up there and she says, wow, this is impressive. I said, I wish you'd told me this eight years ago. Had I known I wouldn't mm-hmm. got the lake house, would have moved up here. All that said, there, there's lake, there's view, there's golf. And, and then uh, there's other subcategories, you know, across the street from the golf, okay, across from the lake, across mm-hmm. from the view. And those are still nice. And then there's just plain old interior. I, I, I really wished I had lived. I'd like to live. I think sometimes I'd like to live on the end of a road, just an interior, interior, interior lot, just mm-hmm. completely alone for a little while. That looks really good. And I'll, I'll give you a quote from, uh, it's really from, nice I, a week at a time. I can tell you <laughs> Abraham Lincoln gave a quote. He said he did not mind having neighbors at all, as long as he could not see the smoke from their fireplace. See that? Yeah. That's yeah. my kind of, yeah. So those, there's so many flavors in the village. I mean, and, and to be frank, really who has golf lake view interior, in 26,000 acres with the, one of the lowest crime rates on the planet, who has that? I don't know anybody, but that's why we're doing a show. That's why we're talking about the star of the show. Got it. Who's the star of the show, Randy? Hot Springs village, Arkansas is the star. Say good night, Dennis. Good night, Dennis. (laughs) Thanks for listening to another episode of hot Springs village inside out a podcast where hot Springs village, Arkansas is the star. Please subscribe to the podcast. You can do that by visiting our website, hsvinsideout.com, and tell a friend.